I was a prisoner walking the street, forcing a smile to every prisoner I'd meet. Till one day I met the man with the keys. He loosed my poor soul and he set me free. Oh, and I'm free at last. Bound by sin no longer, I am free at last. Oh, I will live forever. Satan's chains had me bound, but they fell off when God came down. I'm praising the Lord, I am free at last. And now I am happy, His joy I feel. When I smile, I know that it is for real. No more put on or make believe. Whom the Son has set free, oh, is free indeed. Oh, and I'm free at last. Bound by sin no longer, I am free at last. Satan's chains had me bound, but they fell off when God came down. I'm praising the Lord, I am free at last. Oh, well, Satan's chains had me bound, but they fell off when God came down. Oh, Satan's chains had me bound, but they fell off. Is that your testimony this morning? Oh, Satan's chains had me bound. But they fell off when God came down. I'm praising the Lord. I am free at last. Aren't you thankful for the freedom in Christ this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 If you have your Bible, let's be going to the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Amen. Thank you, musicians and young people for leading us in worship this morning. My, my. I, uh. I was at a church, <laughs> you know, everybody's live, going live and broadcasting everything now. You can't say anything in any church about anything anywhere because somebody's going to tune in and tell them. I was at a church last week that runs about 500 people, and they do worship with soundtracks. They do worship with CD soundtracks or whatever, digital music of some sort. Let me just say you're blessed to have the musicians and the, wor and the singers and the worship leaders that you have. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. And you're blessed to have the pastor that you have. Oh, Scott. Wow. Praise the Lord. He said you're blessed to have the pastor that you have. Amen. You, you lose the benefit of something when it becomes familiar. I need you to hear me this morning. This is not the sermon, but it is something I felt the Lord laid on my heart just before I came up here. There is not just a pastor with a nice family that lives in this town. There is a man of God in this town. Sent on the assignment of God to this house. With a word from God from this holy desk for your lives. He's not brother because he will not stand at the judgment seat for being your brother. He will stand before God for being your pastor. Do you know that there are ways in which you will have to go under greater judgment and scrutiny before the judgment seat of Christ? And the way that you do that, anybody want to be judged more harshly? I don't know if you do, but the way the Bible says if you want to be judged more harshly, then be a leader. And so when he surrendered to the call of God, he surrendered out from under being your brother and being a pastor, meaning he will not give an account. Your plumber is not going to give an account on Judgment Day for your plumbing. Your electrician, not for your, not for your wires. Your accountant, not for your money. Amen. But there is one who will give an account for your soul. Meaning the words that come from his lips are not to be taken as opinion. They're not to be taken as that preacher needs to stop meddling. Friend, if he's going to be judged with greater harshness on Judgment Day, then you should heed the word of God and say, thank you, Lord. That one watches from my soul. 
that carries my soul on him day and night. Amen. Your plumber's not in bed at night worrying about your pipes, but there is a man of God in this city that cares for your soul and your family and your marriage and your children and the lost throughout this community. Amen. And the Bible says that those who labor amongst you and teach the word of God are worthy of double honor. Now, honor is not just accolades or plaques or appreciation. Honor means that you, you give reverence to what God is doing in someone's life. Because Jesus came to his own hometown, and they said, oh, we saw him raised up around here. In the south, we'd say, he's just Bubba. He's just, he's just a guy from next door. And Jesus said, I could not do many marvelous works or heal many people in my hometown because there was no honor. How many want everything that the Lord has for this pastor family to be, to be distributed in this house? I mean, all of it, every last bit of it. Then, friend, don't roast him. Amen. Don't become so familiar that he's just your go out to coffee, go out fishing, go out play golf, whatever kind of friend. Honor the man of God. Amen. And you will receive the fullness of what God has for this house. I don't know if y'all received it the way some of y'all looking at me, but it's my last service. So praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 4. Amen. We don't believe that in the north. I don't know what you believe. I believe the word of God. Ephesians chapter 4. I want the fullness of what God has for me. Let's stand to our feet for the reading of God's word. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 8. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? And he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. I love that passage. Two more verses in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 8. We stand for the reading of God's word because we honor the word and we want everything that God has out of the word for us. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 8, the Bible says, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Father, we love you and we thank you for your word today. God, as we call on you to help those in storms, in earthquakes, in those of grief, Lord, we ask that you would also come and help those in this building, those under the sound of my voice that need to draw near to you, that need to find the answer to everything they're struggling with in the very presence of God. So we ask you to move and do what only you can do in this place. Shift, God, this house today. Let it be more than a service. Let it be a turning point, God, that we never go back to but move forward and onward and upward from this day forward. We pray in Jesus' name and God's people said amen. Amen, you can be seated. I would like to title this message this morning, The Seesaw Principle, but first I need to take a quick census. How many of y'all call that a teeter-totter? Anybody? I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. In the South, we say seesaw. I can't get anointed and say teeter-totter. How are you going to sweat and spit and scream it? God is a teeter-totter anointing. No, that's just, it don't work like that. But seesaw, man, I can get in on that seesaw. Holy Ghost, praise the Lord. I don't even know. Have, have you seen one of these recently? Do they still have these anymore? Have the liberals removed all of them from our country? You, you remember, I don't know, you remember like uh, uh, the play, playgrounds used to be a place of carnage. You, got, you didn't get on the merry-go-round to be safe. You didn't look for somebody of a normal stature to push it. You looked for the fastest, largest, dangerous-looking, crazy, weird-eyed uncle that was not scared and would just run until you were holding on for dear life and you were screaming, stop, but really you didn't want him to stop until flesh was flying in every direction. That was the playground. You want someone to push you on the swing until hopefully you let go at the top of the zenith of the ark until when you land, all the wind is knocked out of your lungs and you black out just for a second. That was why you went to the playground. There no, there's no electricity involved. There's no electronics. There's no tablets. It's just 
full-on danger zone. Yeah, I don't think Democrats allow that to happen anymore. Send this boy back home, Pastor. I know I'm on my way just, just tomorrow. I'll probably never be invited back. It's all right. I had a good time last year. But this right here, this, you just, you didn't want a big person. You wanted a person your size. And I don't know, this, this generation seems to be socially awkward in a lot of areas. They won't make eye contact. They won't talk to you. They won't shake your hand. So I don't know if this works anymore. But all you had to do was go sit on one side and wait for somebody to come on the other side. Anybody that had an open seat on a teeter-totter, seesaw. When I say seesaw, if the person beside you doesn't speak southern, you just translate to them and say, he means teeter-totter. And you'll, you'll, you'll get together on what I'm saying. If you saw somebody with an open seat, that was an invitation to come and partake of the activity. This is a principle of the kingdom of God all the way through. It's the, the, the kingdom of God is a paradox kingdom. Jesus says if you want to rise in leadership, go down in service. If you want to grow in, in, your, in, in, in the largeness of your capacity of finance, then go down in generosity and giving. If you want to, if you want to do anything in the kingdom of God, if you want to, to live, you have to die. It's all about a rise and fall of the opposite in order for that leverage to come up again. We know that's the formula for revival. He said in 2 Chronicles 7.14, he's going to say, repent, turn from your wicked ways, seek my face. Then I'll hear from heaven, forgive their sin, heal their land. But the first part of that formula, as he says, go down. If my people which are called by my name will humble themselves. The power of getting up is leveraged on the power of first going down. What are you saying, Brother Robert? I'm saying if you're in a low place, you're in a good place this morning. If you find yourself distressed but not in despair, cast down but not destroyed, if you found yourself beat down and held down, you are in place for a leverage, a man of an uprising. The kingdom of God is a seesaw kingdom where he who sat high looked low and said they can't pick themselves up. But if I go down, who is he that ascended except for he that also descended? If I go down, then they can get up again. Hallelujah. Pastor was talking in Sunday school about the man who was at the pool of Bethesda. The Bible said he was there 38 years. 38 years. And Jesus asks someone who is lame this question. Would thou be made whole? Would you like to get up? Are you ready to get up? It's like asking a kid in time out. Are you ready to get up? You know, a kid's been itching. If they've been in class too long, been made to sit in their desk, they're just looking for any way out. Are you ready to get up now? And, and the man didn't say yes. The man said, there's nobody that will put me in the water. There's nobody that will help me out. Is that not a modern victim mentality if you've ever heard it? There's no government program. There's no assistance. There's no counselor to come and encourage my distressed emotions. And Jesus, Jesus, the Bible said, when he looked at him, he saw that he had now been a long time in that case. You know what that indicates to me? That there are things that we are held down in. That if we were to say, God, how long do I have to be down here? God would say, you've already been down longer than I wanted you to be. That if Jesus were to look at him, he would have said, you've been there too long already. Somebody say too long. Help me preach and think about things that I've been in a low place too long. I had a man ask me one time, pray for me, Brother Robert. I've been in a dry season, a dry spell in my walk with God. I've just been, I've just been going through something so dry. I said, how long, brother? He said, five years. Five years? You got 10-year-old kids. That's half their lifetime. They need a daddy that gets out of this dry. If you were to say, God, how long do I have to go through this? He would have said, six months. So that's four and a half years ago. You should have been out of that already. Amen. Lame man, you've been there too long. So what am I supposed to do when I'm held down, Robert? What am I supposed to do when I'm in a low place? Call on the one who came down and find that this gospel is a gospel of uprising. Amen. When I was a boy, my dad had a... Uh, he had a shed with his tools, and I don't know. <laughs> we were just country, and we didn't have a lot of money, and I think half the tools my dad had, he found on the side of the road. Anybody, any of y'all know men that will pull over for anything shiny on the side of the road and hope it's a tool? And he also had baby food jars that he had nailed the lid under the shelves, and in these baby food jars were screws and, and bolts and nuts, and 
I'm 37. I don't have any baby food jars with anything in them anywhere in my possession. But by the time my dad was in his mid-20s, he had a collection of all those things. Amen. He, he was a builder. He was all about collecting those things that were needed. Amen. We're talking this morning about the power that when you are down, you can get up again. This gospel says that he saw that we were low. And he realized we needed to get up. I, I remember that my dad, sometimes we'd be working on something, and he maybe inherited the mentality from his dad, if you're taking something apart, you don't throw that stuff away. You're going to use it again. That's why he had all those jars. I don't know if you know this, nails don't come in baby food jars. So all those jars was stuff he collected from something else. And so I remember he would say, I would be a little boy, and I'd want to help my dad on something. He'd say, here's the hammer. Go take the nails out of all that over there. I'm t I felt like that was a big job as a little kid. There was a lot of them. And sometimes they wouldn't want to come out. What would you do if it didn't come out? He'd say, go get the crowbar. Go, go shove a piece of wood underneath it. And then you start leveraging that thing on the fulcrum point. You could pull. You know what I'm telling you this morning is that some of you say, Robert, I would get up if I could pick myself up. But there's not, there's not enough energy. I don't have the emotional fortitude to pull myself up by the bootstraps. I don't know how to get up from here. I'm telling you the gospel is the power of resurrection. Hallelujah. He got up so you could get up. That's my favorite verse in the whole Bible, Romans 8 and 11. If the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will raise you up, will quicken your mortal body. That means when you say, Lord, there's something holding me down. Normal preaching, normal singing, normal encouragement cannot pull me out of here. There's a Holy Ghost crowbar this morning that says whether you feel like it or not, I'm coming for you and I'm going to start ripping you. He says to the uttermost, to the guttermost, he reaches way down and when things don't want to let you go, there's power sufficient in the blood, in the cross, in the resurrection, in the name of Jesus to pull you up again. Amen. Point number two is the power of the Holy Ghost to rise up. Three times in the book of Hebrews it said Jesus sat down. When Jesus sat down at the right hand of the Father, the church got up. When Jesus went down into the lowest parts of the earth, the power of the gospel of resurrection rose up. But then when Jesus ascended, he sent the Holy Ghost down so that something inside of you could get up. Uh, they, they say that when they're trying to raise uh, submerged shipwrecked vessels. This is a sermon all by itself that I just think it's awesome. I'm going to give you just a, a clip of it. Think about this. That when a ship has gone down, it's, it's broken. You can't just go down and, and, and try to make it float again. There's, there's holes in, in the walls of the ship. They don't send out something with cranes and levers and cables to pull it from the top. What they do is they send a diver out and they put some kind of some kind of bladder, some kind of uh, uh, air, air tube, inner tubes inside, anywhere they can find, and they send that diver down with, uh, with an air hose, and they begin to fill up those inner tubes inside of that ship. Now, I don't know if it's been there one day or if it's been there 30 years and there's barnacles growing on it and it's started to be overrun with, with mud and species and all kind of things holding it down, but it is the power of that air that says, I am going to make you more buoyant than the things around you. You could be held down if you were there on your own, but as I preached last night, if you let me... Breathe into you. Oh, hallelujah. Y'all remember that song? I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry and from the waters lifted me. Now safe am I. How? Because he came down. Aren't you thankful the Holy Ghost fell in the upper room? I love that, that, that word in the King James. It said that when Peter and John went to Samaria, though Philip had preached and many had received the gospel, they had been born again, they had been baptized in water, Peter and John said, how is it that as of yet the Holy Ghost has fallen on none of them? <sighs> Come down on me, Lord. Fall on me, Holy. That's a New Testament concept. You can be born again and ready for heaven, but the Holy Ghost is not yet 
come down. In the seesaw principle of the kingdom, if there's going to be an uprising of the anointing, there's going to be an uprising of something of his power inside of you. You have to position yourself and say, I'm low on my own. I don't have a good attitude all the time on my own. I can't fix all my carnal flesh problems on my own. But if you would come down, I could get up again. Breathe on me, God. Breathe in me. Fill me until there's an uprising power. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, if Christ be not raised, our faith is in vain. Because it's not enough that he came down. The power of this gospel is the power to get up again. The power to get up again. When y'all looking kind of bored at me, I got to make you start preaching with me. So turn to your neighbor and say, you can get up now. You can get up now. You can get up now. This is really where I want us to get to right here. There's a power of the gospel to lift people up and out of sin. There's a power of the Holy Ghost to lift people up and out of despair and empower them to live a holy life. But there is a power for the bride of Christ and the church to arise, to be glorious without spot or wrinkle, to be triumphant. And I'm going to come after this right now with the only anointing I have. I don't have a very soft anointing. I got a sledgehammer anointing. Amen. So I need you to hear me and tune in to what I'm about to say because I don't have one church experience. I have, I have a large swath of experiences of seeing different cultures of churches around the country and around the world. And since COVID, I have seen something happen in the body of Christ where we are maybe individually getting up and going forward but corporately, there is something that has sat on the people of God. And so I, I read this recently, and it so shook me that I have to share it with you. Second Chronicles chapter 5 and verse 13. If you want to go there, we're going to read two passages. Second Chronicles 5 and 13. This is when Solomon has finished building the temple. The Bible says it came to pass as the trumpeters, hear me, the trumpeters were all Levitical priests. And the singers, the choir was all Levitical priests. As they were one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. When they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord saying, what did they say? For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. That the house was filled with a cloud. <laughs> even the house of the Lord, so that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house. Praise God. God didn't show up when the bricks were in place. And all oh, modern day Christians, we love our building programs. We love a church upgrade program. I'm about all of that. Let's have the nicest facility we can. But the Bible said we are lively stones. He is the chief cornerstone. We are the body of Christ. We are the church. And so when the building was in place, it didn't happen. But when the worship began, when something began to rise into heaven, not just the ceremonies of blood and incense, but now voices were lifted to heaven. Isn't that what Psalm 100 says? Come before his presence with singing. Oh, that means you can't tweet your way in. You can't text your way in. You can't type your way in. You can't nod your head your way in. You can't clap your way in. Amen. You have to open your mouth. The psalmist says your praise will continuously be in my mouth. This is a voice activated kingdom. It's not a clap on clap off kingdom. It's a voice activated kingdom. And when they said for the Lord is good. All of Israel is gathered to see this spectacle. To see this magnificent temple. And when they lift Lifted up their voice in worship. The cloud of glory filled the temple and the priest. I don't know how to explain it to you. Maybe they were slain in the spirit. Maybe the spirit of God sat on them so hard they just had to sit down. I don't know why, but the Bible said they could not stand for the glory of God was there. Let me ask you, church, what do you do when the man of God sits down? I need a chair. I need you to come right there, Pastor. What do you do when the man of God sits down? I know churches that won't show up if they think their pastor is on vacation. I mean, no, pastor needs to sit down sometimes too. I know churches that won't show up if pastor's got, gotten sick and they, he's called somebody else to fill in. Well, if it's not pastor, you know, that fill-in person, they just, don't, they just don't got it like pastor got it, so we'll just sit at home. What do you do 
when the people of God that the Lord has placed in leadership sit down. I was privileged to preach two services at a, uh, at a meeting with, with people in song. You're familiar with people in song? The leader of it, Jenny Riddle, wrote um, Revelation song, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. I'm just going to keep talking until you nod your head and I know that we're on the same page. Have you heard that before? Si habla inglés o español. I don't know if I'm talking the right language. You speak, you hear what I'm saying? Okay. So, the, so I, I was privileged to preach with them, and she invited me up to Laporte, Indiana, their headquarters, big house, 38 rooms, and they just they write songs, and they're, they, all, they all live there. And so I'm there, and she said, Robert, the ministry of people in song is not to put on concerts, but our ministry is to pass the mic back to the bride. To pass the baton of worship back to the bride until the bride, hear it, she said, until the bride finds her voice again. You know, this is popular in a lot of old school churches. And, and you don't have to have an altar rail or, or whatever, but that people used to wear robes up here. Now we don't do it so much with furniture and with robes. We do it with lights. Churches are getting more and more high you know, media lighting, and so this is spotlights, and we do it with sound systems. We didn't always have sound systems, but we do it with, I have the microphone, you don't. I'm in the spotlight, you're not. I'm on the platform, you're not. And we've come to a place where we don't really believe that we're all in the same body. We don't really believe that the Holy Ghost moves on all of us the same way. And so we've given all the responsibility. I can tell you the year that it happened that I watched something begin to change. The year that American Idol became popular, I watched things change in church. I watched people rush home on Wednesday night to watch the next episode of American Idol. And I watched something change where people were not coming early and praying and preparing their heart to lead a song, but they were coming and they were preparing the song to hit every high note on key, and when they got done, waiting for the applause of the congregation. That is not worship. And just because we have watched that, we've watched singing competitions, and this is not karaoke. What do you do when the person with the microphone is lost in the presence of God and has to sit it down? Is your church over? They came to inaugurate the temple. But now all the, all the trumpeters, down. All the singers, down. All the priests, down. Everybody with a microphone, slain. What do we do now? It's a seesaw kingdom. Chapter 7, same thing's happening. They inaugurate the temple. I hope you're getting excited because this, this is the boiling point of this message. Now when Solomon had an end of praying, fire came down from heaven, consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. And when the children of Israel saw how fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, listen, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon on the pavement and worship, praising the Lord, saying, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. What do you do when the music stops? That's time for the bride of Christ to rise and say, we don't need a microphone. We just feel like praising him on our own. For the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. That comes from Psalm 118. It says, now let them who fear the Lord say, the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. Now let all of Israel say, for the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. Can I tell you post-COVID, we need to be reminded that we are not a, part, a, a spectator denomination. We believe in the Holy Ghost, and you have the same Holy Ghost as Pastor Peter, James, John, Mary, and the Apostle. you got the same Spirit of God. I preached a seven-week revival in London, Kentucky one time. For seven and a half weeks, I was, I was seeking God on my face every day. Oh, God, what do you want me to preach tonight? Lord, we're in a move of God. i got to hear from you. And they would sing for about 12 minutes. I'm talking about quick. And then they said, Brother Robert, come. I said, at some point, I said, this isn't right. This cannot be the Robert Martin show. 
If we've all been in the same prayer meetings, the same altar services, the same revivals, then where is what the book of Colossians says? Every joint supplies what's needed in the body. Oh, Brother Robert, all I supply is, is casseroles for, for bereavement ceremony. No, no, no. That is part of what you do. But in moments of worship, friend, you have a voice to be lifted unto heaven. You have a participation in what God is doing by his spirit. I explain it to young people like this. That if you've been to a school where the, where, the, where the bell told you when to go from one class to the next, that you probably had teachers, some of you growing up probably had teachers, that when the bell rang, you started shoving your notebooks and textbooks in your bag saying, I got to get to my locker, I got to get to see my friends, I got to get a snack, I got to get to the restroom, and then I got to get to my next class. And you were in a hurry to get to your next class. And anybody ever have one of those teachers that when you started getting up, the teacher said, sit down. The bell doesn't dismiss you. I do. Have you ever heard that from the Holy Ghost? Have you ever been apprehended by the presence of God until the musicians stopped playing but you weren't done? And the preachers stopped preaching and you weren't done? And the youth campers were going to the concessions but you weren't done? Oh, friend. Oh, countless times in my life. As a teenager, everybody going out to eat, but I just sat in the parking lot. Oh, God, you're not done talking to me. You're not done dealing with me. Oh, there's got to be more. Friend, if you've never had that moment, then you've been, you've been coming to watch karaoke. You've been coming to watch. You've been coming like the voice. You've been coming like Simon Cow to give you a critical response. I didn't like the second song. The third song, they were a little bit off key. That's not church. Friend, church is whether you say, whether they got it, whether she's got it, whether he's got it, I don't care. There's an uprising in me. Hallelujah. Pastor, stand to your feet if you would please. I'm going to have Pastor shout, for the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. You need to practice. Not yet. Those are the words. For the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. Are y'all ready? What are we going to do? What do you think? It's a seesaw service. He's going to sit down. He's going to sit down because sometimes he's got to go on rest. He's going to sit down because sometimes he gets sick. He's going to sit down because sometimes he's weak. He's going to sit down sometimes because the Holy Ghost says, I'm done using you and I'm ready to use you. And when he sits down, that's your cue. Go ahead, grab the back of the pew in front of you. Go ahead, get ready. I want you to launch up on your feet. We don't do this in New York. Go back down where you come from. I'm going. I'm leaving as soon as I can. The way y'all staring at me, I'm ready to run out the door right now. But before I go, I'm going to give you what God gave me. You are going to launch to your feet. Don't meander. Don't kind of slowly, well, I guess if I have to. I want you to stand up and shout, for the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. We'll just whisper it real quick for practice so you got the words. Are you ready? For the Lord is good, his mercy. Oh, that was the most beautiful Episcopalian liturgical. Ever. Now you know the words. Are you ready? Pastor, shout it. For the Lord is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Sit down. Praise the Lord. Y'all sit down. That was good practice. Now you know what we're doing. And now you know some of y'all, it takes you longer than others. So you got to start getting up a little bit quicker. You got to start your get up before the rest of them get up. <laughs> I know y'all are laughing, but do you see what, what we're going for right now? Hot. It's your turn. It's your turn. If the, if the Holy Ghost wasn't into this, there would not be gifts of the Spirit like tongues and interpretation. You don't put that on the schedule. You don't ask Sister Amanda after the second song, can I give a message in tongues? And I've already talked to my cousin. They're going to give the interpretation. No, it don't work like that. We believe in the spontaneity, the spontaneous, the explosive, that I wasn't expecting it. I didn't know it was going to happen. But in any moment, the Holy Ghost might use a little girl, might use an elder sister, might use a person that's been in trouble. But God sweeps through the place and says, with or without a microphone, I'm going to use you too. So this time, when when you get up, when you get done saying it, would you lift your hands and would you go to worshiping like nobody's cheerleading you, like nobody's prompting you, but you say, it's my turn. It's the bride of Christ's turn to have an upright. I want my church back, a church that's full of the glory of God, not something we're waiting on instructions from the platform. Shout it out, Pastor.
it's your church. It's your turn. It's your turn. I said it's your turn. You don't need a microphone. It's your turn. Have yourself a one woman revival. Have yourself a one man move of God. Lord, I need an uprising. I'm low. I'm teetering on despondency. I'm teetering on depression. I need a God who raises up from low places. Oh, hallelujah. Help me, Sister Amanda. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You can get up now. You can get up now. Come on, tell your worship. You can get up now. Tell that hallelujah that's been pushed way down deep inside. Tell that hallelujah inside of you. You can get up now. Tell your voice. You can rise up now. Oh, hallelujah. Christ came down so you can get up. The Holy Ghost came down so the church can get up. Oh, it's time for the bride to arise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, God, make us your body. Make us your lively stones. Make us your church. God, we don't want just one or two filled. We want a church full of the Holy Ghost. Yielded to the Lord. I would like everybody under the sound of my voice to come and stand in the altar together. Everybody. Bring your children. Bring your family. Whether you're a visitor or not, I want you to come and stand. I'm asking the community of faith here. Come. Hallelujah. The reason I want us to come together Noah, come here. Come here, Noah. This is what this is what life looks like for somebody in this room. Life pulling down on you. Life has a gravity. You can carry the words of bullying for decades. The arguments of, of marriage and spouses, the, the troubles of finances, the blood work report from the doctor. Life is pushing. Isn't that what Paul said? We are distressed, but not in despair. We are cast down. What's he saying? The push of life is real. But the pull of heaven is real too. How many know God used, let me, hear me, how many know the devil uses people to push people down? So don't you think God wants to use people to lift them up? The reason I wanted you to come together is because I want us to pray together like this. Take the hand of the person next to you. Robert, we're social distancing. There's hand sanitizer in the foyer. It'll be all right. Now, consider who you're standing next to. If you've got to be gentle, be gentle. But if you don't got to be gentle, somebody in this place doesn't need you to be gentle. Somebody's been down so low for so long, they need an aggressive pull. If sin and death pulls down, then redemption and resurrection pulls up. And heaven is pulling this morning because Jesus got up so you can get up. So in a moment, I want you to release your faith because you don't know if the person next to you has been dealing with suicidal thoughts. You don't know if the person next to you needs revival in their soul. In a moment, I want you to do just like this. Lord, lift my brother up. God, pull him out, God. Lord, let him feel the tug of heaven, the love of Jesus, the power of resurrection. Hallelujah. Would you do it right now? All over this room, begin to lift him up. 
begin to lift him up in Jesus' name. Go pray with us. Come on, lift him up on your right and your left. God, hell's pulling him down. God, hell's pulling him down. But God, we've come to see him get up again. Come on, open your mouth. Open your mouth. Intercede for one another. You can get up now. 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 Get up in Jesus' name. Get up in Jesus' name. Get up in Jesus' name. Oh, the pull of heaven. The pull of resurrection. The pull of the Holy Ghost. Oh, Jesus. 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 Oh, I will not let you struggle alone. I will not let you fall alone. I've come to pick you up, my brother. I've come to pick you up, my sister. Get up in Jesus' name. Get up in Jesus' name. Get up in Jesus' name. Lord, let us be a body that pulls people out. Let us be a church that pulls people up and out in Jesus' name. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up, get up, rise up, rise up, put on strength. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Go ahead, sis. Glory to God. Glory to God. We worship you, Jesus. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. So let it rise, let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Come on, just worship in liberty this morning. Take your liberty. Let the glory of the Lord take your liberty. Rise oh, among hallelujah. Us. Let the glory you are an integral part of this church. You are a vital part of this church. You are a vital part of what God is doing by His Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Let it rise. Glory, glory, glory. Glory. You can let go of your neighbor and go to worship in the Lord. Let it rise. Let it rise. Let the freedom of the Lord. Let it rise. Let it rise. Let, it rise. Let the praises of the King. Yes, Lord. Let it rise among us. Let it rise. Won't you let it rise? Oh, let it rise. the worship of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the worship of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the praises of the King, let it rise among us. Let it rise, let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Close your eyes all over this house. Close your eyes and hear the word of the Lord. To every sister in this room, to every young lady, every mom, every, every wife, every grandmother, every female saint of God with your eyes closed, would you let the word of God right now come past your ears? I'm not talking to your ears. I'm talking to that dormant something way down inside of you. With your eyes closed and your hands lifted, hear ye the word of the Lord. Woman of God, get up. In the name of Jesus, arise. Be bold, be strong. Put on your anointing. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, woman of God, arise in Jesus' name. You have permission. You can get up now. You can get up now. Hallelujah. 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 There's an overcoming anointing in this house. There's an anointing of an overcomer in this house. My brothers, hear me. Young men, fathers, 
hear me. Every man under the sound of my voice that's washed in the blood, with your eyes closed and your hands lifted, down past your ears, down into your spirit, hear ye the word of the Lord. Man of God, get up in Jesus' name. Come on, I'm talking to that thing that's been asleep inside of you. Get up in Jesus' name. Arise in Jesus' name. The Holy Ghost came down so you could get up. Come on, get up. Get up, be courageous. Put on strength. Hallelujah. Rise up in Jesus' name. Lord, raise us up. Lord, raise us up. Lord, raise us up. Fill us up. Who is he that ascended except for he that also descended? You came down so we could get up again. You led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Glory to God. I need, you, I need you to help me right now. This may not be what you're used to. You may be used to people just letting you pray and never interjecting. But I am intentional about the direction we go in these services. I need you to do something very seriously. I'm going to ask you in a moment to turn to the person next to you and say something. And that may make you nervous and you may, you, you may feel uncomfortable. But, but you don't know how bad they need to hear this today. And instead of me going one by one and looking in your eyes, would you turn to the person next to you and look right into their eyes and tell them, you can get up now. Come on, tell them. You can get up now. You can get up. Somebody went to a funeral 20 years ago and they've been in depression ever since. Tell them, you can get up now. Somebody filed for bankruptcy and they've never been the same since. Tell them, you can get up now. Somebody went through a low phase and they stayed low for too long. Oh, too long you've been there. But the word of the Lord says, you can get up now. You can get up now. Hallelujah. And Sister Amanda leads us one more time. Would you give the Lord a wave offering of worship? Lift your voice. Rise up in Jesus' name. Come on, love him today. Love him today. Hallelujah. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord let it rise among us. Let the praises of the King let it rise among us. Let it rise. The worship of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the worship of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the praises of the King, let it rise among us. Let it rise, let it rise. Let the freedom of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the freedom of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the praises of the King, let it rise among us. Let it rise, let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Let the blessings of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the blessings of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the praises of the King, let it rise among us. Let it rise, oh, let it rise, oh, let it rise. Let the worship of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the worship of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the praises of the King, let it rise among us. Let it rise, let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Yes. 
Say. 